Let me try to explain a little bit about what I'm doing. I blocked this whole roof with a paint paddle and 320. Right? So when you do that, I put guide coat on, I blocked it. When you do that, it leaves straight line scratches. Block marks, we call them. So once you block it with 320 and a stick, then you have to soft block it somehow, either by hand or with the DA and a pad with a little bit finer grit. I'm gonna go with 400 since I'm sealing everything. You could go with 600 if you thought 400 was gonna cut too fast. But anyway, let me get my DA. DA has an interface pad, a soft interface pad. I was to DA right against the, the backing pad. It's going to be a rigid, firm surface. I don't want to do that. I want to distribute the, the weight that I'm putting on it across the entire pad. So I use an interface pad. And that's going to allow me to sand out those block marks. And it's going to give a orbital pattern a sanding pattern that's not going to leave anything that's going to show when it's painted. So it's all been blocked. I DA'd some of it already with 400 and a soft interface pad. And now I'm on this side. soft interface pad lets me get on that rounded surface and it still makes a lot of contact with the surface and it's taken out those, those straight line scratches that we want to get rid of. You just want to keep moving. You don't want to stay in one spot. in the booth we're ready to start taping this thing up get ready to spray it as we go around we're going to look for anything we might have missed uh, pinholes unsanded spots just anything that we don't like we're going to try to take care of now most of it should be good to go you always want to look for anything that might give you problems while you're painting so let's get this thing taped up move on from there So we want to go around to all the holes, all our trim holes, and we want to drill them out. We don't want to make it any larger as far as the metal, but we want to take all the primer, all the filler off the edge, so that when we assemble this thing, we don't, we don't knock a piece off and it go to bare metal. We want to get it to bare metal now and then paint it, and that'll give us a nice thin layer of paint over everything, which is the corrosion protection we need. We won't have to try to drill it out or touch it up later. So as I'm taping up this time to paint, I'm trying to get my plastic a little bit tighter, trying to make sure it's nice and smooth.
So on this truck, we painted the inside so it's super clean. The tape sticks really good when we back tape it. We take the tape and stick to the back side of that edge and just leave some of it exposed so that the plastic will stick to it. This is really clean because it's been painted. But if it wasn't, if you were having trouble with the, the tape sticking on the back side of this panel, you tape it up, you do the same thing, but you can also come on the outside and just barely catch the edge of the, of the pinch weld. And that sandwiches in the plastic and the tape and that really holds really good. Now this is covered with the molding and it's got primer so it's, it's got corrosion protection. So that wouldn't matter that much. If I can avoid this, I do because I want paint all the way you know, to the edge of the metal. But if I was having trouble with this thing sticking, that's what I would do. All right, so I've got this thing taped up and ready. I'm gonna turn the booth on, go around, blow it off really good, and then I'm gonna clean it. I'm gonna clean it first with a water-based cleaner. I'm gonna use SX394. This has ammonia in it. It's kind of a soap and water type cleaner. So it's really gonna clean off any fingerprints, contaminants like that. And then I'm gonna go behind that with a wax and grease remover that'll take off any kind of petroleum type products like waxes, grease, just like it says. So I do a two-step cleaning process, water-based, petroleum-based, and then we'll blow it, tack it, and we'll get ready for sealing. So when I'm cleaning with a waterborne cleaner, I spray it on and I wipe it off, right? You want it, you don't want it soaking wet where it saturates the, the towel and you're just smearing it and it's still wet. You want to spray just a little bit on enough to get the surface damp and then wipe it off. And I use one towel at a time, usually a panel, if it's a big panel, half a panel. Once that thing is saturated, it's gone. It's time to get another one. So we'll mist it on. Wipe it till it's drying behind the towel. So when I put the wax and grease remover on, I use two towels at a time because you really want to absorb a lot of that. It, it takes two towels to, to really pick it up off the panel. If you just use one, it saturates really fast and you're just smearing things around. I'll mist it on again. And I'll wipe it. And I want to make sure it's drying behind me. So I'll turn it over to a drier spot of the towel keep wiping until I see it disappear. You don't want to leave, you don't want to leave it to dry on its own. You really want the air moving. You want this thing drying out. Sometimes it'll cause contamination issues if you let it dry on there. You have fish eyes and other problems. So make sure that you're not putting too much on. That's too much. You want to set it to where it missed you want to just mist it on the panel and wipe it till it dries. It should be drying behind you as you go. Keep your towel clean, flip it over, make sure it's absorbing it. And move to the next spot. And change these towels as, as much as you need. Once they get saturated, they're not picking anything up. They're just smearing things around. I'm about to tack this thing off. I'm gonna blow it and tack it at the same time. I don't like to do it individually. I like to blow and tack so that if something's just getting pushed around, not getting picked up by the tack rag, that it's gonna hopefully get blown off the vehicle. So blow and tack.
about to go put a coat of sealer on the cab, you can use the Global 8085 sealer. I'm gonna put one coat on there. I'm gonna use my trusty old SADA 5000 RP 1.4. We'll put one coat on, probably about 27 PSI. That should take care of it. So it's clean, it's blown off, tacked off, it's ready for sealer. Let's get it on. Throughout the process, you always keep your eyes open looking for something that you don't like. Something needs to be fixed. I've got a very small pinhole up here. I'm gonna put just a little bit of combi putty in it. Let that harden up and sand it off before I start my base coat. It's really, really tiny, but it needs to be fixed. So we'll put a little putty in it, let it, let it dry sand that off and continue with base coat. So to make sure that we're consistent with our color, we went ahead and made two gallons of paint, two gallons of the blue. We're gonna make sure we shake this thing up really good. We'll go in there and start spraying the blue. to put some base coat on our sealer's dry it's been sitting there about 15 minutes i ran the booth up to 80 degrees just to make sure it's dry so it's time to start applying base coat i'm going to use my trusty old sada 4000 use my trusty old sada 4000 hvlp it's always been a great base coat gun so that's what we use for this we're using dbc base coat i know you, some of you might know that this is enviro base behind us it's a waterborne base coat we're not using that on this truck we're using a solvent base coat PPG's DVC. So let's get the spray in. Okay, this truck is going two tone white on the bottom and the top blue everywhere else. I do like to get some paint on everything before I put my two-tone color on, just so that it's on there and it's less painting once I start back on it, once it's taped up and I start putting the, the second color back on. So let's go mix up some white, spray it on this thing. So that's the first coat of white. We'll keep adding coats until we got it completely covered. Then we'll let it dry for a while and we'll tape it up for the two-tone.
took 14 forevers. But she's finally taped up. Time to blow some blue around. I got my clear mixed up. Got my Iwata WS400 Supernova 1.4 tip. Got the SADA RPS cup system. It's a vented system, so it's gonna let the gun breathe and do what it needs to do. So let's go make this thing shine.
Hey, I think we're gonna call it done at this point. Cab's looking good. Everything's turning out really nice. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks to everybody that subscribed to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, of course, come on over and hang out with us. We'd love to have you over here. We'll see you folks next time. All right, so our cab's in the booth. We're getting ready to tape this thing up. Get ready to spray it. There's a wasp on my camera. It scared the out of me. <laughs> it looked like it was on me and it was huge. Anyway, let me kill that. Damn.